Hi guys, it's me, Karen, from Karen's Intuitive Jewelry. Um, today, this was a request by somebody on Facebook when they saw this, one of the most recent pieces I made. Um, kind of simulating what would be in silversmithing, a prong, we'll say prong setting. It looks similar to what a prong setting might be in real silversmithing, but done with soft soldering. And then I did this little spiral uh, bail, which I'm not sure I like. It's okay, but I love this stone. But today we're gonna try it. I'm gonna replicate it with, with a similar, it's not completely rectangle. It's a little wider at the bottom, but this is a, um, pink mangano calcite, which also fluoresces in a black light like you wouldn't believe. And I hope to be able to demonstrate that towards the end. And then we're gonna try um, an oval shape. This is a Kumbaba Jasper. Beautiful, so cool, so organic looking. So um, just to get started, we'll do our little spiel. I'm using the Heiko 601, FX 601, and um, this has been working better than any of the other six irons I've tried. I have not tried the Weller 100 watt. I thought it was a 100 watt, but it is not. It, the name of it is Weller, I think it's N. N1010 or NE1010. So that kind of threw me off and I guess I thought it was a 100 watt, but it's actually a 70. And I think that's part of why I wasn't so happy with it either, thinking it was the 100 watt, but it's not. And then I use Silver Gleam and yes, it's more expensive than any of the other solders, but in my personal opinion, it's well worth it. It did take me about a year to build up enough confidence to where I felt like I wouldn't be wasting money. So it's okay to get started. And even if you like a similar, like a brushed silver or even the or you're going to use uh, black patina so it doesn't really matter that much but to me I, I just love everything about the silver gleam okay and then since getting the right tools which means the right iron the right solder I went back and started to play with this liquid flux um, it cleans up with just water it says um, and it's also a tip cleaner while you're using it, so that's kind of a plus. But anyway, um, it's liquid form. I just pour a capful in a dedicated little bowl with a dedicated brush, and that's been working well. It doesn't create the fumes when it burns off like a paste. And then, of course, you got to have some kind of little bit of ventilation going on. I also have a ceiling fan and I have this little table fan that I put on to draw away any invisible fumes. And then always wash your stones, wash your hands real well, soap and water. I wash my stones with rubbing alcohol and even sometimes if I'm getting ready to solder a, a metal piece on, I might wa wipe it off with a little bit of solder. I mean, alcohol sorry about that and then um, I like this wider this is 3 8 inch this wider copper foil because I can always cut it down um, as opposed to the quarter inch and the last one I actually got is uh, silver coated because it was showing through a lot of the transparent stones so I got this on Amazon and um, that's what this is and so we start by washing our stones and then kind of deciding of course measuring 
think this measured this one, so this goes with this one. And I always do more than one project when I sit down to work. This measured this one. I kind of played around uh, to see what size, whoops, sorry about that, what size of the fake prongs would look best per stone. And I like a thinner one on this one. And I'm going with a little chunkier one on this kambaba because um, I think I'm just going to do one prong on each. May not do the top one, but I may. I don't know yet, but I'm ready. So you just cut that those shapes off of your copper foil, and um, we'll set these down in place first, and then put the long strip around it, mostly keeping the strip right on the edge because the prong cape strips will be over the stone a little bit. So I'm gonna have to do that off camera because I can't see <laughs> good enough. So once I get that done, I'll be back. Just a little tidbit. Um, so I got the little prong things on. I got the rest of the tape going on. What I like to do and try to get a little bit sharper edges instead of just randomly folding things down because I'm some things I find easier is I use a little exacto knife and just kind of slice the corners by sticking the point. I have this up with the blade up, sticking the point in the corner, jabbing it, and then raising the blade upwards to cut. And do that on any sharp edges. Sometimes I even do it on ovals or whatever if there's a clunky bits. And then you can get a crisper edge by folding over like that. And then I'm getting better at trimming um, trimming the back sometimes if it's real messy. And I may cut some of this down because we don't need that much showing in the back. But again, I'll have to do that off camera. Okay? And just like with anything else, the more practice you do, the better you get at it. I struggled with this in the beginning and didn't do it in most of my pieces. But now I'm getting better and um, like the effects. It just makes it a little bit cleaner. Then of course, you burnish your pieces real well, front, back, and sides, and anything that's kind of sticking up, you can get down. And I've noticed sometimes too, even after a piece is finished, if say one of these little prongs feels a little bit like you can feel it, you can go in and, and burnish it again after the piece is done. They do that in silversmithing, so you just have to be careful that you don't tear the tape, because of course it is tape and not just metal. But I did discover that, so don't be afraid to do that. Sometimes even the edges look, you know, a little loose even though they're tight you can burnish it just be careful okay i'm going to finish the rest or the other piece i'm going to do this one next and then i'll i'll come back all righty now that we got these prongs on the rest of the foil tape on and cut out the back of both pieces so they're tidier and I do a final burnishing all the way around. This is a real burnishing tool, but you can use uh, popsicle sticks, you can use a plier, you can use your nail, 
whatever you want. You can do it on a, on a hard surface. You can use, they come in agate and bone and all kinds of things. The edge of a spoon or a knife, anything that's smooth and is going to help you smooth out any rough edges. So now on to the soldering part. We'll see how these babies come out. Don't know if you noticed that the, the, on this one, since this is an oval, I don't know, it was a last minute design thing, I thought, hmm, I think I'll round the edges as opposed to just them being squared off. Because, and it doesn't matter that they're not exact, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, but with soft solder, you know, you can drag it and, and then build on the layers. So I think it'll be fine, it'll be round, and it may end up even have having like a decorative dot on the four corners. I don't know, but I like it so far. Let me get set up for the next step, which is the soldering. Now I'm applying the liquid flux. which I also got on Amazon on this, in this little brush, which I cut excess off so it's not so flimsy. A little bit, you know, harder. Gonna use Silver Gleam again. Got my iron set to just under 700 Fahrenheit or about 360 Celsius. I just start by dropping a few drops on here. just let it melt and kind of slowly move the iron over it. Come on now. impatient sometimes. You can get a nice beaded edge if you have enough. Solder. I think in the beginning, as I've mentioned before, I didn't really know what I was doing. And Didn't use enough solder or flux. Wasn't hot enough. All those things. But it helps to talk to people and and see if you just hover over top. It leaves a nicer kind of a, a beaded edge. And then just hold it parallel, right, because it'll run. So that's another thing I learned from the stained glass folks. Most stuff I learned probably from watching those videos because at the time there wasn't a lot of people doing soldering. I've recently seen more people doing soft soldering. And once you get everything on there, you can go back. 
Oops, I noticed that my, it's gonna be hot, so I'm not gonna touch it, but my one edge of the tape moved, probably from me not being careful with the pliers, so I'm gonna let that cool off before I attempt fixing that. Let's see, I say that, and then, yeah, I don't wanna mess with it while it's hot. Oh, that'll be a bummer if I can't get it straight. Hmm, and I wasn't paying attention, and it looks like it folded over, and now I've melted it, or soldered over it, so I may have to get that hot. Let me shut the camera off and see if I can fix this, because I can't get close enough with the camera in the way. Sorry. Got it. Oof. So, see? Real time. I have to be more mindful of where those little delicate tabs are located. I'm sorry guys, you can totally see my shaking. I hate bringing it up, but for those who might be new to the channel, they may be saying, what's going on with her? Yeah, I have essential tremors. My mom had it as well, so I think it's hereditary. It's not Parkinson's or anything. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just kind of cleaning everything up. bales. You can buy. These are just rings. I can't recall if they were like, a, I think they might have been being sold as a necklace. I know for sure that's what these were because they all came on, which I like. They're textured and they're real thick. Um, takes two pliers and a lot of strength to open them, um, but I've used them on pieces before. And they look nice, I think. I think that ring's too big for this, but I'm thinking for sure on this one. But you can get those, and then, um, or you can just, I have the tinned, 16 gauge tinned wire, and I just made a loop, and then I hammered it with a ball peen to get some texture on it, which is nice because it reflects reflex light um, and I'll cut that end off I was just seeing if I could make a loop anyway play around but there's all kinds of different findings that you can buy and add that's going to be one another one of uh, videos I'm thinking about doing is all the different findings or what you can use for bales but here's something else this is just a charm could totally do that on the back that would be cute i kind of like that but with this design i'm actually going for more of um definitely gender neutral but i'm always on the lookout for designs for men because they get overlooked and they're they're not into all the foo-foo stuff um as i call it <laughs> all the you know fancy swirls and stuff like that so much. I mean, some some do, obviously, but 
a lot of guys just like simple designs. And so that's how I came up with this one. Plus I, I've uh, struggled with making prong settings and silversmithing when I was doing silversmithing. I'm not doing that right now because I had a neck injury um, and really just returned to soft soldering not too long ago. But anyway, yeah, I saw that prong setting in silversmithing and recently thought, hmm, I wonder what it would look like. And I like it a lot. And I think the guys will too. It's got just enough to make it look a little bit fancy, but still very, uh, we'll say minimal. So let's go ahead and get this next Kambaba Jasper done. And again, you can see I just put a few blobs down and then I go back and kind of smooth it out. Sometimes it requires more, sometimes I need to take some off, but usually not, because usually I end up putting more. Because I like to get like a rounded bead. I don't like it when it's real flat, because that's when sometimes you can see um, the tape seams and stuff like that. got you zoomed in a little bit too and I'm still fumbling because it's the camera's in the way and I better be mindful here of this these little t tabs so I don't do what I did on the on the last one and accidentally move it and this cab wasn't perfect it's it's real thick on this side, as you can really see, with the tape. And then as you move around to this side, it's real thin, which isn't uncommon. It lays flat, but it's it was tricky getting the tape on right. And that's when cutting it down on the back is helpful. I'm going to finish this off camera. And here's the uh, final soldering of this oval. I like it. And see how I kind of domed the little um, tabs. Looks cool. I did texture it a little bit just by kind of tapping down around. It just gives it like it flashes a little bit more. So now I'm going to, I cut one of these rings down and I'm going to go ahead and attach it as a bale using a third hand um, little tool, pretty handy. I like these better than these. These are more used in silversmithing because they're um, flat, they don't have the these are more of an alligator clip so they can mar your silver. You don't want that. And you don't have to worry too much about that with, with uh, soft solder. So let's see if I can manage to pull this off without wasting too much time. I'm going to get that on there pretty well. Let me zoom in a little, hopefully. I already decided I kind of want more of this on the bottom. And I'm gonna... This is still the hard part for me. Getting it centered the first time. I think it actually helps if I orient it where I can see a little bit better. If 
flux. As you can see, the positioning change. Let's give it a go. Again, I'm just going to try and get it on there. that I can maybe have a look at it if it even attached, stayed attached. And I better do this side too. It's just always a pain to have to go back and... And if you have any questions about what, what will work as far as different metals, most mixed metals will adhere using soft solder. Sometimes, even with copper, you might have to rough it up with a sandpaper uh, or a file or something like that, but most times they work pretty well. As you can see, this worked immediately. And I think I'm gonna take that. It may be slightly off. Some people may be bothered by that, but I'm not. So I'm gonna attach it a little bit better and hope that I don't loosen it, <laughs> which certainly happens more than I'd like to say, to admit. But now I can move that out of the way, hopefully, and hold on to the piece. Just don't want it to be so bumpy back there. I'm sorry if my camera's moving. That, as I've realized, is probably why a lot of people aren't doing videos about this, because it's not so easy. And I know that, um, you know, people do plenty of videos, even doing metal smithing, which is a lot more detailed. But for a newbie, this has been very challenging. And I am definitely a newbie. So the trick here is to get it smooth without misplacing it and heating it up so much that it comes loose. Gonna go back over and give everything a nice little, nice little look. Make sure things are nice and smooth. So you can see the difference. That part isn't. This part is. Again, without disrupting everything else. And just to hover. Try and get a dot or two there. I don't know. Should we try? Oy vey. <laughs> this is when sometimes it's best to leave good enough alone. But you'll never know unless you try. And look, that's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. So there's that. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, work on this one. I decided to use this little ring I cut down that I cut out of the tinned copper wire. 
So I'll do that off camera to save some time, okay? And here we have the final products after cleaning up and then I'm experimenting with polishing compounds and wheels and all kinds of stuff and eh, they're all about the same. This is Flitz. I've got um, just Renaissance wax. I've tried this Mother's um, mag and aluminum polish and like I say they're all kind of about the same. I just got some mop type wheels, but my collet or the chuck on my drill isn't the right size. I haven't tried that yet. Um, so anyway, cute. And I think totally appropriate for uh, men or women uh, who like more minimal design or even a masculine design. Here's the backs. Got this on a thicker gauge curb chain. This is on a more dainty one. I'm going to try and show you what this calcite does, but I also want to get some final pictures before it gets dark. And it might rain here today. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. This was fun and it doesn't take much time. Really, the most um, tedious is getting these little tabs on there and getting them where you want them and all that. Okay, until next time. Bye guys. And to demonstrate this, are you ready for this? Again, pink mangano calcite. What? Look at that. Isn't that so cool? That's with a UV light. So if you're hanging out in a club with a black light in it, people will see you coming. How cool is that? And any stone really that has certain, I guess, uh, minerals or whatever, especially anything with ruby, like um, a ruby will fluoresce, a ruby zoocyte, ruby fusite, um, Ruby and quartz, um, yeah, and I just dig it, so cool, so cool, all right, bye.